This is RTV6 News at Noon, working for you. First at noon, winter is back with a vengeance. Temperatures have plummeted. We're no longer enjoying the 50 degree weather, unfortunately. I'm joined this midday by our own Todd Claus to talk about the forecast. Todd, we had the rain move through, the winds yeah. move through. He said that was the front coming. Yeah. Things are different on the other that side. That was the cold front. When you went to bed last night, temperatures were still in the 50s. It, it felt was pretty mild. good when we came in, yeah. Over the weekend, that was nice. Yeah, that cold front went through, and we are now uh, back to reality for the end of December, and temperatures are currently sitting in the 30s here all across the area. Now, after starting off again this morning, right after midnight, we were still in the 50s. 36 in the city as well as in Richmond, 35 in Greencastle. Bloomington right now sitting at 37 degrees and Lafayette at 34. We've been having some rain and or snow showers out there, and there's a few that remain, but for the most part, they continue to diminish. In fact, this is probably just a brief shower and or a flurry, and that is just about it across the area. However, there is one just to the west of downtown or right now. So if you're in the downtown area, don't be shocked if you see a few flakes, but this will continue to diminish and there will be no accumulation uh, with uh, the snow showers moving through. The other issue, these winds of change, they continue to blow and gust up to anywhere from 25 to 35 miles per hour. In fact, near 40 miles per hour in the Bloomington area, that's putting wind chill values down in the 20s for everybody across the area. These wind chill values will basically stay where they are throughout the remainder of the afternoon and into the evening hours. So definitely bundle up if you're going to be out and about. We'll talk more about your New Year's Eve forecast and beyond coming up in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. Well, it has been described as one of central Indiana's most dangerous intersections. Now officials hope that it's much more safe with the completion of a new roundabout. Today, the city of Carmel held a ribbon cutting for the new roundabout at 96th Street and Keystone Avenue. That's right on the border between Carmel and Indianapolis. You may remember that Carmel has been trying to put a roundabout about in at 96th Street and Keystone since 2016. But now the $28.7 million project is finally complete. So traffic should be moving much better now that this construction project is done. And again, the hope is that this intersection is more safe for drivers. This just into the RTV6 newsroom, the man convicted of stabbing another man to death inside of a Southside Kroger, Kroger store. Well, he has learned his fate. Jason Cooper has been sentenced to 45 years in the Department of Correction and 10 additional years on home detention if he has a place to live. So that's 55 years of total punishment. Again, 45 years probation in prison and then 10 years home detention. Police say that Cooper stabbed 43-year-old Carlos Castro three times and then shot him twice after Castro refused to give him his cell phone. This all happened inside of a Southside Kroger store back in 2017. Cooper then lied, led police on a chase until he was eventually stopped after crashing into several vehicles at a deal Again, 45 years in prison. New information this midday. We're now learning that a child was shot and should make a full recovery in an incident that left a woman dead. This all happened around 1.40 yesterday afternoon on Clarkson Drive. That's near 52nd Street and Georgetown Road on the northwest side. When IMPD officers arrived, they found the woman suffering from gunshot wounds. She was taken to the hospital where she later died. The child, who we're learning was also shot at this incident, was taken to a local hospital and is being treated treated. Again, that child is expected to recover. IMPD is trying to figure out who shot the woman and this child. So if you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers. That number is 317-262-TIPS and you can remain anonymous. Two people are dead following a shooting at a gas station. This happened up in Lafayette and it happened just after seven o'clock last night at the Family Express on Old State Road 25. Police tell us that they were called out to this store and reports of shots fired. When they arrived, they found one person dead dead and another armed by the gas pump. When they tried to detain the suspect, we're told shots were fired and the suspect was hit. He died at that scene. Well, come take a good look at these three men on your screen. They're accused of robbing a southeast side restaurant at gunpoint, and police need your help to find them. IMPD says that the men went into the Great Wall restaurant in the 3400 block of South Keystone Avenue on Friday, December 6th. They say that they were picking up an order, but investigators tell us one of the men pulled out a handgun and demanded money. The men then left with cash and escaped in a red vehicle. If you have any information or know who this is, call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. 
We now know the new leader of the Beach Grove Police Department. Mayor Dennis Buckley named the current Deputy Chief of Police, Michael Maurice, as the new Police Chief of Beach Grove. Maurice has been the Deputy Chief for eight years now and he'll lead the department. He talks about what's coming next. I know that we'll be working with the school closely um, to add uh, hopefully more officers to the school for their safety. And then we'll also look at um, bringing back a, uh, we need to look at um, starting a narcotics division slash aggressive crime enforcement division. Well, earlier this month, we learned that the current Beach Grove Police Chief, Mark Schwartz, is retiring at the start of the new year after serving eight years as chief. Luckily, we can tell you everyone is okay after a fire destroyed a southeast side home. The Indianapolis Fire Department rushing to this house fire on Danube Street around 1030 last night on multiple reports of fire and a loud explosion. When they arrived, the home's second story was engulfed in flames. Two adults and two children made it out of that home safely. Firefighters also evacuated a house next door as a precaution. Again, we can tell you no one here is hurt. The exact cause of the fire is still under investigation, but new information investigators believe that the explosion that they heard may have been caused by a propane cylinder that was found burned from the fire. Well, the Colts are heading to the offseason in disappointing fashion. The Jacksonville Jaguars blew the Colts out in the last game of the season yesterday. The final score, 38-20. Colts quarterback Jacoby Brissett gave up two fumbles in the second half. Indianapolis finished the season 7-9, and nine, and after a 5-2 and two start, they now look forward to the draft as they get ready for the next season. Coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll hear from members of the Colts team who talk about what's next for them. Still ahead here on the news at noon, a dirt bike crash takes a child's life. We'll have new details from the officers at a tragic scene in Columbus. Plus, a shooter storms a Texas church. How parishioners fought back to keep this from becoming the next mass shooting. And a new parking system, parking permit system, how it's working out for the Hoosiers down on the Bloomington campus. Todd. And Lauren, the winds of change have been blowing here in central Indiana since this morning, ushering in much colder temperatures. What you see right here are your wind chill values across not only central Indiana, but the Midwest. We're in the 20s right now. Teens off to our west. We'll talk about how long this chill is going to last coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast. You're watching the news at noon right here on RTV6. Premieres next Monday, 8, 7 central on ABC. Welcome back to RTV6 News at noon. A five-year-old in Columbus, Indiana is dead after a dirt bike he was riding crashed into a tree. Conservation officers say this crash happened Saturday afternoon on West 525 South in Bartholomew County. Officials say that boy was riding the bike on family property when he attempted to ride the bike up a ramp and lost control, crashing into a tree. Officials say the boy did appear to be wearing a helmet and other protective gear when he crashed. Right now, Indiana University is testing out a new license plate reading camera for parking enforcement on the Bloomington campus. This change comes as campus officials plan on switching from hang tag parking passes to a system involving license plates that are registered by the parking permit holder. The campus parking manager says the test is aimed at figuring out how to best implement the new system. License plate readers are already used for parking enforcement in some cities and other campuses, including Purdue University. If you're going to be out ringing in the new year, plan to make sure that you get home safely. Rideshare Service Lyft will offer free rides up to $10 in value on New Year's Eve here in Indianapolis. It's designed to take you from a downtown party to a downtown hotel. For this deal, you need to download a code from SQ Law's website who's sponsoring the special service. We have a link to that site up right now at the RTV6 app and also at the IndyChannel.com. Be safe out there. Next on the news at noon, an officer involved shooting on Indy's south side. We'll bring you an update on two ongoing investigations there. Plus, saving lives in a holy space. How a Texas shooting at a church could have been much worse. And let's take a live look outside right now in Bloomington, the campus of Indiana University. We'll check in with Todd's Todd Clausen's full forecast as we come back from the break here as it is cooling down across central Indiana. We'll be right back. Serious questions, simple answers. 
This midday, we're learning more about an officer-involved shooting that happened on the city's south side early Saturday morning. Metro Police now detailing the moments that led up to this incident. Just before 3 o'clock Saturday morning, Southeast District officers with IMPD were dispatched to an attempted carjacking. The victim said two men attempted to take his vehicle at gunpoint. That victim drove to an intersection of Wedgwood Drive and Lacey Drive to wait on officers. And then around 3.30 in the morning, the responding officers spotted two guys matching the suspect's descriptions walking along Stop 11 Road. Police say one had a rifle and did not comply with officer commands to put it down. We're told as additional units responded, the officer fired weapons at the man, hitting him and disarming him. The second person who police say was a juvenile complied and was taken into custody. Max arrived and took the suspect who was shot to the hospital in critical condition. Two investigations are underway right now, a criminal investigation and also an internal affairs investigation to ensure that officers complied with department policy. Today, and new information about a shooting during a church service near Fort Worth, Texas, leaving two people dead and injuring three more. The West Freeway Church of Christ was live streaming the service when that gunman fired several times. ABC's Serena Marshall has new information coming in this midday. A Sunday service interrupted. After a gunman, seen here in the service live stream, seated in the back of the room, opened fire. Active threat. 1900 South Las Vegas Trail. The panic at the West Freeway Church of Christ near Fort Worth lasting just six seconds, but left two people dead and three others injured. Members of the congregation ducking for cover, one man covering his wife with his own body, others returning fire. Today, evil walked boldly among us. But let me remind you, good people raised up and stopped it before it got worse. The shooter taken out by two of the volunteers on the parish security force. The citizens who were inside that church undoubtedly saved 242 other parishioners. Church officials and Texas Republicans hailing a new law in Texas that took effect in September, which allowed licensed gun owners to carry handguns that are either concealed or in a shoulder or belt holster in churches, synagogues, and other places of worship. But the West Freeway Church of Christ Security Force has existed for at least 10 years. One of the church's ministers telling the New York Times they added the team because of mass shootings in public spaces. And it isn't the first time a house of worship has been targeted. In 2017, the shooting at Sutherland Springs Springs Baptist Church in Texas left 26 people dead. At West Freeway Church, one woman said her mother, a longtime member of the church, saw the suspect and noticed something was amiss. The shooter was sitting next to my mother. She knew from growing up the church that this she didn't recognize this gentleman. But still, no motive has been identified. Police officials and the FBI, who's now assisting in the investigation, continue to search for a motive. The special agent in charge described the shooter as a transient person with roots in the area. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. And we are hearing from Jewish leaders following an attack at a Hanukkah celebration north of New York City. Police say that five people were stabbed by an intruder with a machete-type knife at a home of a rabbi on Saturday night. That suspect was arrested shortly after the incident. He was arraigned Sunday morning and is now being held on a $5 million bail. We spoke with David Sklar, the assistant director of the Indianapolis Jewish Community Relations Council, who says attacks on the Jewish community are becoming an epidemic. Well, I don't know that it's real well known what the level of, of violence uh, is right now against the, the Jewish community across the country. And so, you know, I think any, anything that folks can do to raise that awareness and to, you know, really at the end of the day, we just ask for, for folks to stand with us. We'll, we will continue to, to confront this hatred uh, and anti-Semitism. And, you know, we just look for, for folks, whether Jewish or not Jewish, to, to stand with us. And Sklar says locally there's a lot of work being done on focusing on safety and security, which includes making sure facilities are secure. Staff members are up to date on lockdown drills and are ready to respond when needed. Actor Zac Efron, best known for his role in High School Musical, reveals that he bounced back after battling an illness in Papua New Guinea. Efron went on Twitter and Instagram to address reports that he had been rushed to the hospital in serious in a serious emergency while filming his new reality adventure series, Killing Zac Efron in Papua New Guinea. Efron says he did get sick, but he bounced back quickly. He gave no details on what the sickness was about or what he had or what treatment he received.
Here this midday, we do want to check in on those changing temperatures. Todd, we came in really early this morning, and it was still kind of warm out, but that's all gone, right? Yeah, you know, it was really mild. We were at 53 degrees at 12 a.m. this morning, and our current temperature sits at 36. So we have dropped considerably since that front went through, and it might have even woke you up. I know when that front went through my house, my whole house kind of shook a little bit with that big gust of wind that accompanied the passage of the front. And it's still a breezy day out there with wind gusts anywhere from about 25 to 35 miles per hour. These winds should start to subside just a little bit as the day goes on, but even this afternoon, it is going to remain pretty breezy all across the area. At the top of the hour, wind gusts reported at the Indianapolis Airport and down in Bloomington at 38 miles per hour, a little less as you make your way up towards Peru at 25 miles per hour. Uh, but anyway, you look at it, that wind is helping to cut this temperature uh, just a bit. The actual temperature at the airport right now is 35 degrees with the sustained winds out of the west-southwest currently at 22 miles per hour. And after everybody was in the 50s this morning, everybody now is in the 30s, no matter where you go. 35 in Greencastle, 37 in Bloomington, 35 in Greenfield, as well as Tipton and Peru. You factor in that wind. This is what it feels like. Everybody has wind chill values that will be in the 20s. And this is where you'll stay throughout the afternoon hours because our actual temperatures aren't really going to move much at all throughout the remainder of the day. We stay right around 37 degrees here through 5 p.m and then slowly fall back down closer to freezing as we get closer to the midnight hour. As the winds start to calm, though, the wind chill values won't be quite as harsh later on this evening as they are here at this noon hour. As far as the precipitation, there's not a whole lot left. A few flurries, a few sprinkles, and that's just about it across the area. One of those uh, bands of uh, rain and snow shower activity now making its way through the metro area. It's just a few flurries here to the north in Frankfurt as well as Kokomo. But this was a massive storm. I'm sure you heard all about it. Some heavy snow across the Midwest, still snowing in Minneapolis, back into Michigan to the east are dealing with the rain and wind in New York as well as New England. So going forward in this forecast, it's just a flurry or two this afternoon. Otherwise, lots of clouds will be present. Fast forward to tomorrow. One thing we'll have to keep an eye on tomorrow is this little band of snow that's going to work its way through the area in northern locations. It may not make it to the metro area. If it does, it's just a few flurries. But if you do live in northern locales, by mid morning tomorrow. We could be talking about some minor accumulation, generally a coating to maybe a half an inch. It's not a lot in the way of snowfall, but again, it could slicken up the roadways just a little bit. Otherwise, your New Year's Eve forecast looks like this. Temperatures very chilly, lots of clouds around. Should be pretty quiet as we ring in the new year with temperatures around freezing and mostly cloudy skies. New Year's Day, 43 degrees with sunshine. Then it warms back up, Lauren, for Thursday and Friday, but with the warmth comes more rain in the forecast. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Stick around. We'll have much more ahead here when the news at noon continues on RTV6. Keller. Keller and Keller. This is RTV6 News at Noon, working for you. Adventurous dogs took on a bit more than they could chew, and they're lucky to be alive. And it's all thanks to a Milwaukee bus driver. Boy and Nero are Doberman in a pit bull pair. And on a 20 degree night just before Christmas, the two had wandered off miles from home. You can see him there. Meanwhile, Milwaukee bus driver Jamie Gabrowski was on her usual route when she spotted the dogs running in and out of traffic, so she knew she needed to act fast. She led the dogs onto her bus, keeping them warm and safe inside. A police officer eventually picked the dogs up and took them to a shelter where they were reunited with their family. I couldn't leave them out there like that. You know, people nowadays, I mean, if they can hit humans, I mean, what is a dog? I was so happy that someone took time out of their day to turn in our dogs and say, I found the dogs. Well, thanks to that bus driver, Boy and Nero got to go home just in time Thank for the holidays so. after a little adventure. <laughs> Looks like they got some good treats All as right. well, so yeah. they're hey, so that, cute. They knew that bus would be warm, so yes. uh, good spot to go. All right. A few spotty rain and snow showers here this afternoon, no accumulation. Otherwise, it's all about the cold and the wind in the 30s. A few snow showers tomorrow in northern locations with maybe some minor accumulation and then a quiet New Year's Day with a high temperature of 43. All right, Todd, thank you so much. And thank you for joining us and making R2B6 your choice for news. We hope you come back here, join us for the news at 5 o'clock. Have a great Monday afternoon. We'll leave you here with a live look from our Weather Now camera on top of the pagoda at IMS, looking back towards the city skyline.